Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenerz and today I have a special guest for you guys. It's Kaká from Portugal who is one of the biggest tournament organizers we have in Europe and he's on the forefront of making the CDH community in Europe even larger, even more professional. So please welcome Kaká. Can you please introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do for the CDH community? Well, my name is Kaká, like uh, you said before. Uh, I'm a player above all, and I'm also known as Kaká uh, for uh, my close circuit of friends. Uh, I've been CDH since 2000, 2017, 2018, if I can recall. And now I'm running also tournaments in Portugal for CDH since 2020, if I'm not mistaken. So for almost two years now. So a player at heart and a tournament organizer, basically as an addition, right? Yeah, as, as an addition and uh, kind of as a necessity, because that's how it, it all started. We didn't have any places or any tournaments that were worth for players to travel to and play. So, so you basically you, you, took the, you took the initiative to get things rolling in Portugal? Yeah, we can say so, yes. Yeah, nice. I was a bit defied by, by some friends to do it, do it, and yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then we start doing it. And so we are today talking yeah, about it. Now we, we've got the huge things coming this year. So your local um, CDH community seems to be very active and it seems to me that you are on the forefront of that and pushing towards a greater CDH community in, in Europe. How did that come to be? How like what, what were the first steps and why did you like feel the ne necessity to, to push things forward in this kind of way? So, uh, we started running small tournaments on the local AGS in Lisbon for around 60 to 40 players in the first year. Uh, this work was done as a common effort, like I told you before, by several players, so that the community building done in the last years was the main factor of growth of the scene. Portugal is, uh, is a small country, we didn't have much recognition in the past years, but I believe that has changed quite a lot. Uh, since we, we reach 80, 120 players coming from all over Europe uh, and that, that was kind of an organic evolution. Mm -hmm. So we, we like to keep our, foco on, on our focus on our players. Mm -hmm. So we gather feedback in each tournament and we try to improve it to the next. I guess uh, the success is a reflection of the effort and commitment that our whole community has made in this that last two years, it wouldn't be here without our our player base, and yeah, that's, that's that's a fact. Yeah, that's it's it's great that you you put it out there because like it, it's a community effort. Like everyone has to has to work together to get things going. Like even if the organizer gets the events going, people have to be there. People have to give their feedback to make it perfect to make people want to come back. Right. That's that's really great that the community yeah, yeah. in Portugal yeah. and Lisbon is so active in doing that. Yeah, and only one person cannot do it <laughs> it's it's impossible yeah. it's a group effort uh, and every effort from everyone is is appreciated because it's the, the small things that makes makes a difference in the end right and this this basically leads me to my to my next question here in berlin where i live we've wanted to get things going in the same kind of way like you are going uh, doing it in in lisbon but unfortunately it just did it didn't happen as of yet like we we weren't able to get a uh, location going and get set dates for tournaments and stuff like that what tips would you have for local small local communities to 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 get where you are today maybe not not as far not as big but maybe just at least get the ball rolling i believe the most important thing is transparency and hear what your community expects when they are traveling for a tournament and starting always with small steps and improving event after event. I think that's one of the most important things. For example, if you announce an underground C for a specific tournament and, and on that day of that of the event you don't have the players, you need to make it happen. You need to take the loss and run it either way with that prize pool you announced because that's credibility you are giving to your players. When you travel to a tournament, you expect to have exactly what you paid for and where you invested time on. So uh, it's a risk, yeah. But I think uh, you've been recognized as someone who has um, a credibility of delivering exactly what you are. How did you start off? Like, how big were the initial, the first tournaments you had? 
our first tournament was 60 players. The, the entry fee was six euros and the prize was a scrubland. It was just something to for people to have a reason to come and play. Yeah. And th that was the start of everything. So, but if you want to keep people interested, at, at least the way we did it, and I think it worked so far, is focus not just on doing one tournament, but providing a great experience overall. So mm -hmm. we always have make sure to have lots of giveaways and surprises, things people don't expect. Because there are, uh, a big portion of players is not going to the tournament to win the tournament. They are going to have a great experience. Yeah, I feel if, that. <laughs> if they go to a tournament, and even if they, they trio or the whole trio or whatever, it, it doesn't matter if the experience is good. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will come back. And yeah, they will totally talk about it to the friends and yeah that's what makes the, the org organic community growth yeah i, I completely think. agree i like the, the the few tournaments we had in, in germany like even when i went there with a deck that i knew would not perform really well it didn't matter because i, I was there because i wanted to experience the community i wanted to be there with my friends and have a great time and usually that was the case so that's like really important i totally agree with that yeah so, so while we're on the on the topic of like making a great CDH experience for players and not just the best tournament, just but an overall great experience, mm -hmm. you came together with a lot of other tournament organizers from Europe, and you are now hosting the CDH Europe Championship um, this year in Lisbon. So, how did that come to be? Like, what was the idea behind that? Whose idea was it? And how how did you manage to get like everyone together and make this great effort for the community? In the last tournament on the Purchase 2, we already talked that uh, our tournaments were no longer uh, a Portuguese league. So mm -hmm. we, have, we have people from so many places that the name was just wrong <laughs> at the time. So uh, a couple of TOs from Germany, from Slovenia, uh, we chat a bit about doing some kind of uh, partnership. Also, the, the Spanish guys that are returning every tournament. Mm -hmm. So, in, as we talk about that, the, that idea was in the air. And in the beginning of December, I was kind of approached by two or three of them mm -hmm. to join um, a, a server, a Discord server. Uh, and they are planning on do something uh, European-wise so that we can all get together was about the, the the beginning of it what was like that with just hanging on a discord server and let's do it and finding the the right way to put all the things together to make it make it work yeah, it's so great that the, that you like from small 60 per person tournaments mm -hmm. with great experience people come there tournament grows you get everyone from everywhere okay. all over the place from europe and then all of a sudden it's like okay we we can't confine this to to portugal to a Portuguese league, we, we yeah. need to make it bigger. Yeah. You, you guys just did it, right? I mean, that's a big step. Yeah. It's a lot of work you put in I, there. Having um, a Europe community united, it's it's just amazing for the format. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, I think it's a key factor for each country, country easy, easily grow their community and solidify Europe as one, as one meta, you know, as mm -hmm. one community all together. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, and, and and that's the, this is the beginning of it, and I think there's a lot of things that can be done going forward. Yeah, totally agree. And now, while we're on the matter of going forward, are there any any news you want to share with us for the CDH Europe Championship? When when exactly is it? How can we attend? Uh, what criteria are there? Anything special you have planned for the tournament that you want to share with the community? So uh, there are two ways to to get into the tournament. Uh, you, you can buy a public ticket that will be around uh, April. Mm -hmm. They will be very limited. Then you can get priority tickets. Uh, and what is a priority ticket? Uh, not all communities in Europe are are the same. Some are more, more developed than the others, but it doesn't mean we, we should exclude totally all the other communities. Mm -hmm. So if in your country the only community is you and your two or three friends you can contact us. We have a, a big portion of tickets that, that are waiting for those kind of players to approach us so that, that they can be present and represent their country and That's their great. own community. Yeah, that, then we will have the invitational events. 
it will be all over Europe. It will be almost 100 events. And they, the slots were given to the different countries based on the community size. Ah, okay. So basically, <laughs> key, right? D depending on how large the community is, you get these, this amount of tickets for your country to represent. Yeah, th this, is, this is kind of a, a, ch a shot in a void because mm -hmm. we have no idea if this, if this, if the distribution is correct or no, or not. But that's why each country has a specific TO mm -hmm. that it can uh, arrange things and see if he's going to need more or if he has uh, too much uh, tickets, mm -hmm. so he can give them to another country. And this will be kind of an adapting si situation throughout the year in order to try to bring fairness to to everyone. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. Nice. So, um, anything else you want to share for the community? I, I know that you have some special, like, uh, sponsors, sponsorings, uh, for example, like Dragon Shield. Anything else there is going on? We also partnered with Couch for to bring online tournaments to, mm -hmm. to Europe. So, uh, they will be running the tournaments mm -hmm. uh, and we will be giving 10 slots for the, um, the top 10 players at the end of the, of the season. Mm -hmm. This is also a way to bring the community together. I'm pretty sure a lot of players are going to play there and then they are going to meet in person. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is going to be an awesome experience to, yeah. to every single one of them. And a lot of players don't have all the other way to play, but but online. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. They don't have LGS they can go to. So that's an opportunity for them to, to practice because mm -hmm. we are also practicing when we are participating in these kind of tournaments. Yeah. We are fortunate enough to have some good sponsors behind us. We have two LGSs here in Portugal that helped us a lot when moving from a small LGS to renting hotels. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard. And when you go to a, 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 an event, you have to, to have MTG material. You need to have mm -hmm. singles and sleeves and all kind of that. Because without that, that's, that's not the same. And it feels yeah. weird. So they helped us with that. And uh, we have the Raccoon Shield now, which is sponsoring us uh, really big time with a lot of uh, custom sleeves. And they will be at the event. They will be doing interviews there. Yes. And it's the first time we will have the Dragon Shield on, on, the, on, the, on the venue. And that's mm -hmm. pretty cool for us. And they will be giving a lot of giveaways. Nice. And also Card Market, Card Market that has been sponsoring us for two years. And it's also featuring us in the, the, the our last tournament on the Card Market Insights. Mm -hmm. That was really, really something we, we, we appreciated for them because they didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And they asked for it because they, they actually want to, to support more Commander. And that's, that's pretty awesome for, for all the community. Yeah, and I, I do believe that as we grow as uh, one unique community in Europe, uh, I hope that uh, at least our sponsors to be prepared and willing to uh, expand the, 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 their sponsorship to all the other TOs and all the other communities. Yeah, I hope so. As well. I, that I think would be that's really that, great. That, it will also help yeah, professionalize CDH, right? If the sponsors hop on. Yeah, I, th I think to be professional, there's a, a, a long way to go yet because some rules, some some kind of structures are not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking back two, three years ago, there was nothing then. Yeah, totally. Like it's baby steps, there was right? Nothing we're, then. We're, in, we're totally at the at the beginning, and we're like baby steps forward. But we're definitely on the right in the right direction, like going in the right direction and moving forward, especially. Mm -hmm. I, I like to believe so. <laughs> I like to believe we are. Uh, all right, I would uh, I would say let's wrap it up. Thank you, Kaka, for taking the time to answer all of my questions. I'm really happy and glad that we have someone like you in the community that's so active and uh, brings everyone together to, for this great effort to to like bring this CDH community together and and get it where it is right now. And yeah, thanks again for taking the time. If you have any questions, I will link all the stuff down below so you can find all the servers, all the other links that you need to participate. And yeah, thank you for watching my videos. This is Eisenherz and Auf Wiedersehen. My name is Kaka. Obrigado. Até a próxima.